Nasreen is a powerful new documentary film on Nasreen Sotudeh, one of the world's most courageous women, a human rights activist, and a political prisoner. The film is narrated by Academy Award-winning actress Olivia Colman. I'm delighted to have filmmakers Jeff Kaufman and Marsha S. Ross joining me to talk about this brave and special film. Hello and welcome. Hey, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. you. From your resume, I see this is, you know, in the in your wheelhouse. But how does a film like this end up being produced? But what I call what I call the uh, American wing of the production, an important wing. If I can use the wheelhouse analogy and and then break it, uh, I assume a wheelhouse allows you to steer in one direction or the other. Uh, but sometimes you end up going in down paths you don't expect. So um, making films is somewhat the same way. Um, I don't know if that analogy is going to hold up, but we'll see. Uh, but but we've done a number of other films about Iran, but we've also done other films about dynamic people who believe in the power of both politics and the arts to change society and who end up becoming like the center of movements. Uh, and we've always been interested in, in how people catalyze movements around them. Uh, and, but also over time, we just have developed this very strong interest in and respect for uh, the people in the culture of Iran, uh, feeling there's a big gulf between the leadership and the, and, and the way people actually live. And so all those are, were, were forces uh, in, in, in steering us in that wheelhouse towards doing this film. یکی از مهمترین اتفاقاتی که بعد از انقلاب افتاد به ویژه در حوزه حقوق زنان هجاب اجباری بود. همواره دردقه خانم منم بود. ایران کشوری است که زنهاش تحصیل کرده تر از مرد ها هستن. زنان ایران حدود 60 سال قبل حتی قبل از زنان سوئیس حق رعی به دست آوردن. زنان تلاش کردند و یک سری حقوق رو به دست آوردن حق رای به دست آوردن حق شغل به دست آوردن حق آموزش به دست آوردن همه چی رو به دست آوردن ناگهان انقلاب میشه و زن حجاب باید داشته باشه زن اجازه نداره بعضی از مشاغل ممنوع برای زنا و قانون خانواده لغو میشه یعنی مسئله چند همسری قانونی میشه حق طلاق از زن گرفته میشه حق سفر بدون اجازه شوهر از زن گرفته میشه ما نمیتونیم از رنج و بیعدالتی سخن بگیم بی این که از بیعدالتی دهه شست که بر جامعه ما رفته سخن بگیم زمانی که بحث حقوق زنان در ایران بالا گرفت زنان از هر طیف فکری بودن کنار هم برای موزگیری ایدولوژی مذهبی یا سیاسی نداشتن اونها یک خواسته داشتن که برابری حقوقی و انسان زنان نصف جامعه هند که اگه شما نصف جامعه رو حقوقش نبینی دوچار مشکل نوش The image of, of the West is very different than the broad brush that that image is painted with. Uh, what can you tell us about the Iran you saw or what you learned about me, uh, by making this film? Well, I think you touched about on something that was very important to us, which is that so often we only know other countries by the governments, you know, what we read in the newspaper, government to government, you know, things going on. What you, what you don't know is about the people and the common humanity that we share with people in other countries. We don't know about that. The people really, there's a universality amongst people uh, and that Iran is a very beautiful country actually, and a very modern country and a very sophisticated country. And that's something that became very, very important to us, you know, uh, you know, to frame Nazreen's life around, that Nazreen, that the, Iran has a very rich culture, it has a fascinating history, it's a very modern place, and most of all, it's a physically beautiful place. Uh, something that, you know, when you talk to people that are, are from Iran, who live in exile, who cannot return for political reasons, 
something that makes them very sad, really, that they can't go back to see the beautiful mountains and the, you know, the lakes and everything that makes Iran a beautiful place. And, and I think that that was something that was very important for us to convey in the film to, to people who knew nothing about Iran. And yet for people that have actually from Iran who've seen the film, you know, they've been, you know, they've really expressed to us how important it's been for them to see their country portrayed this way in a film in which they feel it's not usually portrayed. And because we're working with really talented filmmakers um, who put themselves at risk to film with Nazreen, uh, and because Nazreen loves the arts and feels that the arts are often ahead of where politics are, you know, we had a chance to uh, follow her and take uh, people who see the film uh, into you know, a bookstore in, in Tehran, into a theater that looks not unlike something you might find in Greenwich Village, into this sort of avant-garde art gallery, uh, you know, into the malls of, of Tehran. Uh, and just as one of Marsha's favorite scenes, Nazreen just waiting for her son Nima after school and holding his hand and walking him home. Uh, really moments that are just, just life. And, uh, and I, I think sometimes we forget that there's th that quality across various divides. Um, to, to clarify a few things, this film was made in secrecy and people risked their lives. How hands-on were you? Were you actually in Iran involved in the production or was this something that happened afterwards? Go ahead. Well, uh, to begin by saying that we really could not go to Iran for many reasons. I think, as, as Jeff has expressed, he'd made a number of political films for Amnesty International. So, you know, if we'd gone there, we would have been arrested right away. But the other thing, too, is that as Americans with a camera and an audio and lights and gear, you know, wandering on the streets of Tehran and other places there, you know, we would have been very conspicuous and it would have been impossible to capture the intimacy of, of, of Nazarene's life. So, but, but, but we started this movie with Nazarene herself. That was first we had to speak to uh, Nazarene and Reza and ask them about whether or not they felt comfortable doing this because that was a lot of concern for us too, their safety, you know, particularly their safety, you know, um, and their family's safety. And we must have asked them 25 times and we said at any time we'll stop making the movie. So she was able to somehow, and we don't know how she did it, actually enlist some people to help help. Well, it was not exactly, but yeah, go ahead. I mean, Can we don't. I don't know. I can't. I can't speak about that because I, you know, this is that why these people are anonymous. Right. But um, but we were a part of. I mean, but we were there from day one, so we weren't on the ground. But you know, Jeff was very clear what he was looking for. I mean, he often would send over you know, kind of information about stuff that, you know, he wanted to make sure that was covered. So. Yeah, and then and then one of the delightful things was that there'd be wish lists that we might have or we'd talk to Nazarene and say, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Uh, we, we certainly hope that Nazarene would have a chance to film with her colleague and, uh, and the great filmmaker Jafar Panahi, for instance. Uh, but then there are also just these surprises, you know, that you can never expect and you, get the footage through this circuitous route that, that gets to us and you start watching through and you go, oh my goodness, I can't believe that that happened. That's and, always a great feeling. And, you know, of course, you know, we thought a lot about the narrative that, uh, you know, because obviously there's Nazarene the person, but, you know, that she's just our, our leading lady and you know, I come from a background in casting. So she's our charismatic, compelling leading lady whose story we're telling. But you know what's really also important is the narrative in which you you tell her story because that's obviously what makes a film and and the the cast around her the other people in her life, and so um, you know we talked a lot Jeff and I about you know what is it we want to bring across in this movie in the telling of this woman's life what's the story here how do we build the story how do we build these characters so so that we are interested in them and there's meaning and in what in in what's happening and so. It's true, you know, there were things that came from Iran. And we also traveled around the world and interviewed people ourselves. And I think that, you know, I, I think going around and, you know, Miles Ray and Sharon Abadi and Dr. Romani and other people, that was really life-changing talking to people because there are certain things that we, I wanted to understand, you know, very clearly. And one of the things I really wanted to understand is, as a mother myself, 
how do you do this? I mean, you know, you're leaving your young children. I mean, she does have a wonderful husband and a very supportive family, but there's a lot of women in prison in Iran right now who, you know, Nargis Husseini, you know, I mean, she's out now, but, you know, gone for years from their children and, and then leave prison, you know, if you think about Nazreen, she had been in prison, she got out, she, and yet she went back. So, so there, we, I really wanted to understand that. And I think interviewing other people and really talking to them about their, the driving motivation was very, very important. And also connecting to people's feelings emotionally about uh, around the country, which we really learned in our own interview process with people around the world. It's incredible for me to see the, the vision you both have uh, uh, going into the production and remotely. Uh, what was the hardest part about making this film? Well, the hardest part about making the film was probably the emotional reaction to having Nazarene arrested and then worrying about her fate every day. Um, you know, whenever you do a, a documentary about someone, you carry the responsibility to tell their story right. Uh, we often tell stories about people who aren't exactly like us, you know, and so you're stepping into someone else's skin, their society, their culture. Uh, and so there's a heavy responsibility to, to be as respectful and understanding and nuanced as possible. Uh, but then again, uh, June, 2018, Nazreen was arrested for her work uh, in large part defending these women who went out on a public street, took off their mandatory hijab, their headscarf, put it on a stick, and, and to pro protest the fact that they could get arrested by not wearing a scarf, they took off their scarf and waved it for people to see. Uh, some of these people were, women were beaten up. Uh, many, most of them were arrested. A number of them were defended by Nazarene Sutta Day. Uh, and uh, some of them you know, faced decades in prison for doing it. And that led to Nazarene's arrest as well. What, what can you tell us about Nasreen's current situation? Uh, any update on her? Um, yes. Well, as you may know, she had been home on uh, a temporary medical leave. She had undergone a 46-day hunger strike calling for the release of political prisoners uh, from COVID-ravaged prisons in Iran. Um, she had a heart, a heart condition prior to that that only got worse. Uh, she, at one point... Um, had, when she was in the Vien prison had been told, okay, we're going to take you to the hospital now so you can get some care. And so they put her in a car, I packed up her things, put her in a car, drove her out the gates of Vien prison. She thought she was going to a hospital. Instead, they just drove her straight to another prison called Garchak prison, which is about 50 kilometers north of, of Tehran and has a reputation of being one of the most physically foul, dangerous places in the country. And um, yeah, it was there that uh, a few weeks later she got COVID and now she has COVID-19 as well. So she was home on medical leave for a short period of time with a heart condition and COVID and um, really suffering from the effects of both, but, but battling back in the way she does. And we talked to her uh, one morning and she said that uh, I was just told that I have a two week extension on my medical leave and, and that you know, things aren't going well um, another two weeks after that. And so she was feeling reassured that she could stay with her family a bit longer. Three o'clock the next morning, um, they told her, nope, you're going back to prison right now. And she had to leave the house and go. So they broke their word as they often do. And she's back in guard check prison right now. بعد از آزادیش اینو سعی کرده بودن توی کانون وکلا که مجوز فعالیت وکلا رو کانون وکلا میده. ایشون پروان وکالتشو لغو کنن کلن اومد گفتش که من به عنوان اعتراض میرم جلوی کانون وکلا این این سه سال رو اونجا تحصیم میکنم Why is this film important for us westerners for people in the west outside Iran to see? Well there's so many reasons One is that Nazreen has the potential to be a truly transformational figure in her country and in the world. Just by her example, by her moral exa example, she is. She's been called the Nelson Mandela of Iran and the Nelson Mandela of our time for good reason. Uh, you know, she represents true grassroots democracy, uh, empowering all people, 
um, you know, uh, uh, and a respect for all people. And um, that's an incredible role model. And she, she shows she's the real thing by the sacrifice that she's making uh, for those, those, those standards. I also think she just speaks so clearly to what's right for this country. We've, it's strange and haunting and appropriate that over the period of time of making this film, uh, we've also experienced the Trump administration, which has been uh, very focused on rolling back rights, uh, women's rights, civil rights, uh, the ability to speak in public, um, transparency in government. It's a very long list. Uh, and at the same time, we're working on Nazarene's story. And it's not just about Nazarene, you know, it's about this whole group of people who are willing to stand up in public uh, and call for the basic human rights that we take for granted in this country. So I, I think she's uh, offers so much to the people of Iran, uh, as do the issues she's fighting for. Uh, but also, I think she offers something to people all over the world to be reminded uh, of the importance of, of basic civil rights uh, and uh, to have someone to look up to so we can pursue that in our own countries. I wanted to ask you about distribution. <laughs> who takes sure. on, yeah, who takes on a film like this? Because they're not very profitable. Well, we have a wonderful distributor, um, uh, Virgil Films here in the United States. Um, and uh, Joe is amazing. We've worked with him before, and uh, this is subject matter he cares deeply about, and he, he gets it, and he loved the film and completely supports the film. We also have international distribution, too, with uh, Java Films um, out of uh, Paris, and they're doing a wonderful job making sure that the film is going to be seen on you know, international television and VOD over there. And we're opening in movie theaters, uh, you know, virtual cinema tomorrow, uh, tomorrow actually, will be in virtual cinema across the United States and Canada. And, uh, you know, it's a, kind of a new, the new frontier, virtual cinema. But if you go to our website, www.nazarenefilm.com, there's so many links that you click on, it takes you to the tickets. And the way it works for people who haven't done it before is you buy a ticket, you're buying really a stream. You go to the movie theater that's nearest you where it's playing, but you can go to any theater in the United States. People in Canada have to go to Canadian movie theaters, but you can go to any movie theater in the United States where it's playing. You purchase a stream, which is your ticket, and then you watch it at home. And um, it'll be at least into the beginning of next year in movie theaters. And um, the film's been seen at impact events around the world and a lot of film festivals internationally in here. So we've gotten a lot of support for the film. Yeah, and since we're talking about uh, teamwork, because you know every step of the way of a film is teamwork, including, as you say, distribution, we're also just very lucky that uh, we have an uh, impact campaign team that's been working very hard to get the word out on behalf of Nazarene, that's Mocha Media. They're just doing a terrific job because we all realize that this is A, about a film, but it's B, about a woman at risk, you know, whose life could end if she's not treated properly. And so we're grateful to them. We also have an education distributor, Collective Eye, yeah. who will be making the film available at universities and schools. And, and so, um, you know, we're really grateful to all of them and, and really see us all, you know, uh, behind the same wheel, going back to the wheelhouse. No, we have uh, and I should team. just mention that uh, you can find out more about the film. And also, if you want to do what Marcia said and, and get a ticket so you can see the film or uh, participate in Nazarene's campaign or both, it's www.nazarenefilm.com. Nazarene is spelled N-A-S-R-I-N. So www.nisrinfilm.com. <laughs> dot com that's yeah, my best spelling i can do you can do but the other thing i also want to mention too that you know if you want to host a screening for your organization uh you know your university your organization we you know we've had a lot a lot of support from uh you know iranian organizations all over north america and uh the international legal community jeff and i showed the film um at the european um at the, in the European Union Parliament, uh, thanks to Mocha Media. So we, um, you know, you can also bring this uh, the film to your organization as well when you visit the website. 